Final question, again, one I think um, every member of this audience probably would want me to, to ask you. What's the damage to our national security uh, agencies, to the people of the CIA, <coughs> other intel agencies, the FBI that you work with closely, Mike, uh, of this period in which you have the president calling the whistleblower, CIA officer, a spy and accusing him of treason. What, what damage does that do to the people who work for these agencies and also to the partners we have around the world uh, who are our essential liaison? Well, obviously it's not good. Uh, it's uh, not a good thing uh, and I think it affects you know, a lot of people in the intelligence community, but I have to say it's a dangerous thing to try to characterize uh, again, an another FAQ, you know, what's the morale of the intelligence community? Well, the intelligence community is a large, complex, globally dispersed enterprise, and there are thousands of people in the intelligence community who aren't affected by this stuff at all. So if you're at uh, Mission Ground Station someplace, you're in Denver or Menwith Hill or Pine Gap, or you're uh, in Embassy X someplace as an intelligence officer, you're just there doing your job and you're just not affected by this. this. So the specific elements that are really directly affected in, within the intelligence community are, of course, my old office, the Office of Director of National Intelligence, obviously the agency, CIA, and the FBI. It does have uh, effect on them, but there are <clears throat> you know, vast parts of the intelligence community that just aren't directly affected. Now, just because they are a part of the intelligence community and are getting, uh, you know, pretty regular bad-mouthing, uh, that's not good for morale. And it, it isn't good as well for our intelligence partners who share with us uh, in good faith, uh, you know, information that they believe uh, is germane to our, our national security. Mike. I guess I'd say two things. Um, my observation is that by and large in the agencies, um, you know, when there are ups and downs and controversies, <coughs> uh, people still go about their business professionally. And the vast majority are dedicated to their work. And whether things are uncomfortable or not, it's not going to change the mission. The other thing I will say is, generally, and I think Jim will, will attest to this, our relations with our good partners overseas at an operational level have generally um, been able to resist the vicissitudes of politics. Even when the politicians are each, at each other's throats, uh, the professionals, particularly those in the security space, know how to work together and know how to trust each other. Um, so th this will pass, but I, I would leave you with this thought. I happen to be chairman of the Board of Freedom House, which was set up you know, over 50 years ago to promote freedom around the world. People look to the US as a beacon for the values of democracy and freedom and the rule of law. And when we stand for that, not only do we earn friends, but we actually earn admirers. And I remember meeting people who, uh, when I was in office, in Central and Eastern Europe, who had been high school students during the Cold War and under the boot of the Soviet Union. And they said to me when I met them many years later, the fact that Americans like Ronald Reagan spoke up for freedom, tear down this wall, inspired us to keep strong and to keep struggling for freedom. And that is one of the most powerful weapons we have, and it would be a shame to lose it. 